Hi, this is J.D. Ingram of the Charleston Pipe Band, and I want to welcome you to my series on how to be a great piper in three steps. As a refresher, here is the tree diagram for our three easy steps. Stay tuned as we dive into today's topic. Lesson 2. Musical Expression by Grace Note Fusion. Why are we talking about embellishment fusion today? Well, embellishment fusion allows your embellishments and your as long as possible or as short as possible playing work more harmoniously together to add musical expression to your playing. Some things that we'll practice are fusing a short note that comes before an embellishment to the front of the embellishment, fusing a short note that comes after the end of an embellishment to the end of the embellishment, and focusing on playing the fused short note and the substeps of the embellishment at approximately the same length of time. Some drills. We'll practice a candidate for embellishment fusion by first practicing playing as long as possible and as short as possible. More on this in the last video. Add some complexity back to your music by putting placeholder embellishments in place, such as a low G or a G grace note. Finally, practice grace note fusion on a single note or transition slowly at first, focusing on individual steps and then more quickly before putting it back into context of a tune. Okay, so the idea of grace note fusion is the idea of the steps of an embellishment, for instance, in a grip, the two low Gs. <laughs> that have musical time and rhythm and take up actual space in the music, those being combined as part of a series of small elements with short notes that are adjacent to a grip. So a super common instance is a A, B, grip to C. That's a very common start to Green Hills and Tyrol. That short B before the grip should be almost the same length as the G's in the grip. So, right, the B, G, G, C should be a continuous rhythm. Too many new players, because they've learned the grip and they've learned real notes, will go. All right and they'll pause on that B and then they'll prepare themselves and then they'll play the grip. Practicing your embellishments with common short notes before or after them will really help smooth out the music and bring some liveliness and expression and lift to it. So uh, a great one is the A, B, grip to C. Mm, B, G, G, C. Bum, 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 make it uh, kind of a four step movement instead of a three step movement. Instead of GGC, make it BGGC. We'll look at some drills as uh, ways to practice common examples here next. Here is the sheet music for our drills. As you can see, each embellishment is played dot cut embellishment and then quarter note complicated embellishment, quarter note. Print this out and we'll run over it. Okay, so hopefully you've got the sheet music in front of you. You can go back, screen cap it, print it out, whatever. Reach out to me directly if you want a fresh PDF copy. However you've got it, let's look at each step. So uh, the first one, uh, first bar is a low G, then a short A, and then a D throw. And I'm going to be playing the heavy D throw, which is a four step movement. Right? The A, both low Gs, and the C should all be about the same length. So first, right, kind of play it however you normally play it. And then the second time around, really focus in your head on that low A being part of the D throw. All right? Something like that is probably overkill. But Think about it as a as three notes with one embellishment, and then think about it as two notes with one embellishment, 
and kind of go back and forth to really drive that into your head. And then the other thing is do it, uh, slow your embellishment down and think about it as step by step with that one extra step of the short note. So. <laughs> Next one is A, B, D throw. Same, same overall rhythm, just two new notes. I'm practicing this with a metronome. Tapping out your steps can really help smooth out that idea of the short note being the same length as your steps. Um, so the first note goes through all of the, what I think of as common uh, notes leading into a D throw. Usually it's one note, the next note on the way towards the D, and then the D throw. So G, A, D throw, B, uh, A, B, D throw, B, C, D throw, uh, and then you've got top hands down, F, E, D throw, G, F, D throw, high G, D throw. Okay, so in line two, we've got uh, a couple instances of a grip to C after a short B. Uh, the first instance is actually a grip to B, A, B, grip to B. And then A, B, grip to C. with your metronome where that B and both low G's are approximately the same length as each other. Um, we've got to the next couple bars are also more grips to see. Look in the middle of line two, we've got the double tackum or tarragon or hackum, uh, depending on what you call it, which is the idea of uh, fusion after an embellishment. So you've got a B doubling, then an E grace note to low G, but thinking about that short B in the middle of the B doubling and the short B after the B doubling as being parts of a larger three-step movement. Same thing with the C tear again. Um, I'm practicing that up. Uh, you've got kind of the, the sort of a tear again, D throw, E grace note to B. If you're playing the heavy D throw, if you're playing the light D throw. Right. Um, and we've got short notes leading into doublings. and the middle note of the doubling, both being about the same length. B, da um, So that's kind of becoming a three-step movement straddling the beat there. That's starting line four, the D, E, F doubling, same idea. Right. And so on and so forth. Um, these are just some of the examples I have uh, identified as the most common examples but you could take this exact same principle, starting it out, how you think about it today, breaking it down into super slow, step-by-step -step embellishment practice with the fused note being part of that embellishment, using your metronome to speed yourself up to performance speeds, and then playing it as you think about it as a single unitary, uh, massive monster embellishment. That's the approach for using fusion to make your music flow better, have more drive, more lift, and uh, generally be 
a uh, addition a tool in your tool cabinet for ways to make your music sound more expressive and more fun. So try that out and um, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks again for watching this week, guys. As a reminder, we've been talking about of the three steps to be a great bagpiper. Step one, have good finger work. Part three, play with musicality. And sub step two, practice embellishment fusion. Have a good week, guys. Keep up the good work.